This, to I, me, that's I one think, of the best I think Gabe kind of gets mad when you know you say things weren't his idea. Uh, but no, that was that was 100% me. And I think most of the really super awesome things in wrestling are it has to be the idea of the performer. Because I, I mean, I, I believe in things that come from my brain way more than you know. Uh, an idea from somebody else. Yeah, that's it was it was one hundred percent me. One of my favorites that you've ever cut. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Hey, Pop. Uh, uh, thanks for making wrestling fun. Just appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, thanks for a little bit of my thunder with your retirement question. Sort of along those lines, um, I was going to ask, when you finally do hang it up, do you think it'll be like a, more of like a solid retirement where like Sean says so never coming back, or like a Terry Funk where he just. <laughs> I mean, he's like a hundred. <laughs> and, uh, and either way you go with that, uh, just a, sort of a second part, do you ever see yourself maybe sort of uh, in like a backstage role or an on-camera role, but not uh, actively competing? It's hard to say what I would feel, uh, but I do know, you know, when whenever it is I, I stop, I'm, I'm going to stop. I, I don't want to stop just to go back to TV the next Monday with a, with a suit out, you know, which wouldn't happen anyway. <laughs> you know, I... I'm here now, and I have a lot to give to this business, so to me it's more like uh, the people who can benefit from it need to capitalize on it right now. You know? um, but I, I can't say, I might, I might disappear for two years and then, God, what if I miss it? You know? That'd be cool. That'd be a cool feeling. You guys gotta understand that. Never, we'll welcome you back anytime. I've never had a break, you know, ever. I was supposed to take one last year and bring, to bring it back to Al Pacino. They pulled me back in. <laughs> I started doing this in 1997, and uh, aside from fracturing my skull and, and taking uh, two months off, <laughs> I've never had a break. Appreciate it. There's, there's something out there. And I'm, there's something else out there, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna conquer it, and then maybe I'll come back. Woo! It. It's not movies. It's not? It's not movies? Thank you, Tom. Thank you for that. <laughs> Actually, the vote of confidence. You know, I was supposed to be in the the, the new whatever. What's the new movie? Yeah, that was my, that was me. That was me, and they gave me the shooting schedule. This is here. This is a true story. This will this will be uh, what gets reported on the internet, and what I get uh, talked to for. Uh, I, I I was offered the movie, and I was like, cool. I kind of got some reservations. You know, I want to talk to you. We you know we talked, and uh, then they gave me the shooting schedule, and I looked at it, and I was like, huh. So the, the, the deal was no house shows, just TVs. And I looked at the shooting schedule and I was like, hey, you know, and I'm not gonna tell you who I was talking to, but um, I said, you know, that, that looks like it's the European tour. No, 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 it's not the European tour. No, that's, I mean, last year we did TV in Atlanta on Halloween, and on November 1st we flew overseas. That's the European tour. Arr, you know, let me, let me call you back. Hello? Yeah, hey. Yeah, that's the European tour. <laughs> All right, well, I'm glad we checked that out. Uh, so basically, it's, it's one of those things where uh, I'm, I'm proud of the fact that I'm way too valuable to be taken off of TV uh, to miss a European tour. Um, so the movie went to somebody who I guess we can afford to, to lose. For a <laughs> First off, thank you for coming to Chicago for the meet and greet and whatnot. Also, thank you for bringing inspiration to everybody, the kids, everybody. Uh, my question was, or is, how was it working with Eddie Guerrero during your indie, your indie run? That was awesome. Uh, one of the, the greatest things that ever happened to me. Also, a great part of my DVD. You know, because uh, my DVD is like it goes in stages, and that's that's the start of a new like evolution in CM Punk. Because I thought I was really good, and then I got in the ring with Eddie Guerrero, and I just realized I was, yeah, was just horrible. <laughs> it was one of those things, and so I basically looked at Eddie, and I was like, I, "Okay, I suck. What do I need to do to get better?" And it's one of those things. It's weird. There's nobody that does that. Nobody in the current locker room. Nobody in the current WWE environment will just come up to me and be like, "Hey, what do you think that I do needs improvement?" Like nobody does it. They'll just be like, hey, did you watch my match? And I'll be like, yeah, maybe don't do this or put this in a different spot. And then the next day I'll watch their match and it's like they didn't even talk to me. You know? <laughs> so then that person just gets, you know, check, checked off the list. 
but you know, I and I, you know, Eddie was like, "Here's my number. Call me if you ever need anything." And I was like, "Every 15 minutes." Hey, Eddie. Yeah, <laughs> I got this question. You know, uh, somebody offers somebody as good as Eddie offers their their wisdom to me. You know, like I, I, mean, I took it. But that's just that's my personality type. You know, you give me an inch, and I, I'm you know I'm long gone. I'm taking as many miles as like, I possibly can. Uh, and working with him was was great. And it sucks. Uh, it sucks that I can't do it anymore. You know, I I, I wrestled him for Norm Connors IWC in Pittsburgh. I was like the IWC heavyweight champion, so we had a match for that. And uh, uh, Norm, who is the Norm Connors, the, the the Booker, he said uh, he just told Eddie. And, and, and the thing is, Eddie had already been rehired, and he worked the pay per view against Rob Van Dam, and he won the Intercontinental uh, title. And he was coming back to this crappy indie in the middle of Pittsburgh. He was the IC champion, and he was wrestling me. And he, he didn't have to be there. He could have called up Norm and been like, no, I'm sorry. But Eddie's from the old school, and he was uh, honoring his commitments and his dates. And so he came in. He's the Intercontinental Champion. I can't beat the Intercontinental Champion. You know, that's, that's a little weird. But in our crazy world of pro wrestling, the, the guy from the outside shouldn't come in and beat this company's champion either, but Norm, just being a respectful guy, and, you know, he just told Eddie, we're going to make it non-title, you know, frog splash, see you out there, blah, 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 and Eddie, Eddie said no, Eddie said, uh, and as I was looking at it, I was like, huh? Um, <laughs> he was like, we'll do, we'll do 30 minute time limit, like a draw, so now I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> Because right, 30 minutes with anybody else at, at this time to me, like uh, 30 minutes it was 30 minutes. 30 minutes with Eddie Guerrero was like 62 days. <laughs> so we we had the draw, you know, whatever, good match. Every, every, all the people are happy. Um, Eddie tells everybody to put their cameras away and everything, and he says, "I gotta find out. I gotta find out who's better, me or you." So I'm gonna put my Intercontinental Championship on the line right now. You put yours up and I couldn't beat you. I'm gonna put mine up right now. And we gave him, you know, like I don't know, an extra five minutes or whatever. And when we locked back up and he goes, Oh, Punky, I'm sorry, I have to go over with the frog splash. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that's cool, and, you know, whatever. And so I, it's funny, I wrestled Eddie Guerrero for the Intercontinental Championship before I was in this company and he told me, he's like, don't worry, someday you're gonna be up there and you're gonna wrestle me uh, for this again. Never got the chance, which is a bummer, but that's the kind of guy he was. Thank you.